So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, pretty much also sets the tone for our next panel discussion, which we have, where we are looking into these uh, new modes of partnership, a more uh, relationship between the CFO and the CIO relationship for integrated advanced technologies. And I invite here the speakers of the session, inviting Mr. Siddharth Mittal, the President, Finance and uh, CFO, Biocon. May I request, uh, yeah, he's there. He has over 15 years of uh, global and diversified experience in the field of strategic finance and also accounting, M&As, and the transition role, etc. Thank you for joining. Inviting our next speaker, Srikant Balachandran, the global CFO of Bharti Airtel. Now, Airtel, as we all know, presently it is uh, ranked, I think, number four in the world in terms of the wireless communications, and they are operating across uh, various geographies. So that is where the role of the CFO, especially of uh, Bharti Airtel, becomes all the more very important and responsible role, demanding a lot of uh, this communication to be transferred across the various departments and working in close coordination with the CIO. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Balachandran has also been recognized as the best uh, telecom CFO by CNBC TV 18. Our next speaker, Ms. Pratibha Dwani, CFO Tata Communications. Uh, the name uh, actually reminds you of someone from the political scene, but uh, she, ladies and gentlemen, is the CFO at Tata Communication. She is responsible for the strategic financial management of the company, including corporate affairs. Our next speaker, Mukund Prasad, the director and group CIO of Wellspun Group. He joins us. Uh, his expertise are in the business uh, transformation through technology, leadership development, also change management and cultural integration. Again, cutting across uh, geographies and across various countries. Thank you for joining us. And inviting our next panelist, uh, Mr. Anuj Agarwal, the Vice President and CFO, Canon India. 23 years of extensive work experience. He is the head of FNA Legal and Taxation and Corporate Planning Division at Canon India. And inviting now our uh, moderator, Mr. Samiran Ghoshal, the co founder, sorry. He is the partner and leader IT advisory practice, India, and member Global Emerging Markets, EY. He's an experienced professional with uh, over 25 years of work experience in India and overseas. He's responsible for developing the India Talent Hub, and he works closely with the EY practices across the globe to service clients. He also specializes in the energy and the utilities manufacturing, consumer goods, and public sector industry realms. He has also had a deep exposure in managing enterprise apps business in the SAP area, the system integration business, and he's also led and executed large outsourcing deals in addition to running a P&L for IT software and service businesses. So I hand over now to the moderator of the session for the proceedings of the session. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is it on? Just have a try on it. You speak for me. Good afternoon, everybody. Is it working? Yeah, just uh, greetings from each one of you, just to check the mic. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So we have the mic. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Thank you guys uh, for being here. I know that uh, this is the hardest part of the day, listening to many guys speak uh, after lunch. So one of the important jobs me and my panelists have is to ensure we keep it very interesting and engrossing so that all of you pay very attention. And this is a very uh, 
uh, it's a very interesting topic they have thrown at us. So uh, while we have all been introduced as you can see this is a mix of CFOs and uh, one CIO we, we are missing another CIO who is supposed to join us but uh, let me let me set the context and the way, way we plan to have uh, this next 45 minutes to an hour is to have it a little more interactive session. If you look at the topic there are two distinct parts of it. One is the CFO and the CTO relationship. So the assumption is there is a joining at the hips between the two roles. Uh, so what is that relationship, how has it been in the past, what is it today and how is it going to happen towards the future. And the reason for that discussion ultimately is uh, the integrated advanced technologies. Now the way we interpret that is as technology is getting all pervasive, as technology is getting more mission critical, maybe a little more for certain industries, less for other industries, but increasing is doing that. In light of that, how is these two guys going to work together? for the organization's benefit. Now before I throw it open I, I plan to specifically discuss a little bit of the past around this relationship, maybe look at what is happening today and then come to what is, what is the future looking like. So why don't we start with a little bit context setting of the CFO and the CTO relationship right? as it has happened in the past. Okay. So why don't I start with maybe let me let me start with our our CTO in the panel here. CIO. CIO, okay. CIO in the panel here who has seen the world from multiple angles and of course he is uh, reporting to the MD and is his past role he has. So what do you see your see this whole relationship about where it has evolved and where it is today? So let me first uh, say that the word CIO, how that word has evolved. So those of you who have seen the world of 80s and 90s, there used to be an MIS in every company. And the person who was an MIS manager who was largely handling IT of, a, of an organization. So when 90s came, suddenly there was a huge excitement about ERPs. And most of the organizations looked at ERP because they thought they were going to be big business enablers. And then they said that no, now this MIS thing will not work anymore. Because in the MIS era, people used to make reports for different people. So the head of marketing, head of supply chain, head of inventory management, head of payroll, used to get reports from those MIS people or the finance, CFO the setting here. So if I can say so, he had three jobs. His basic job was to manage stakeholders and his expectations. His second job, managing ambiguities within the organization. And his third job was managing incompetencies related to technology, right. including himself. Right. So just, just to stop you there, so let me, let me turn to a, to a CFO. So let's hear from, let's say, from a large organization like Airtel's perspective. Right. So let me turn it around. And uh, it's not that I'm setting you up, but if you can put a counterpoint around how you see from an organization which has, I would say, one of the, this is an industry which has huge dependence on technology. It's very much embedded within that. So how do you see this whole relation which has evolved in the past and how is it going to be the future? So I think <clears throat> telecom today is more software and digital than it ever was. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, and it's still evolving. Um, technology is very much embedded in the way of working of a telecom company. Technology is deployed not just for running the business, but for actually facing the market and facing the customer. Mm -hmm. The only way you can service customers, the only way you can deal with their issues, you can resolve their problems, or you can enhance their quality of their experience, network experience provide more innovative service offerings in telecom, only way to do it is more and more innovative technology. Mm -hmm. So this is as far as we are concerned, this is very much embedded 
in our not just in running the business efficiently mm -hmm. but in our growth model as well as well on that so so uh, obviously you're in an industry where cto plays a very interesting role a very important role um, let me come to maybe another industry and and certain other trends of how this is going to happen so we discuss for example from a biocon perspective now let me put a different spin to it instead of discussing about C cfo and cio relationship today uh, in your organization as you see maybe even in a pharmaceutical organization there will be many many more technology led innovations happening there will be concerns which a typical cfo will have around security of data around the entire control frameworks and all that as this evolves how do you see in a in a your organization the two working together or not together because and i'll i'll put a different put a, another spin to this is without hindering the rest of the organization in that adoption how do you see yourself so i mean i think uh, as you said that uh, each industry has a different impact on what uh, you know it or the ci contributes and uh, rightly said that uh, in, in a pharma industry uh, unlike a telecom industry or a banking industry you see the the importance of uh, it uh, you know in a slightly different way while it is important today we are in a digital world uh, every business operation uh, virtually runs on uh, in an application or in it infrastructure however you know, again for a pharma company the bread and butter business is the research and that's the research of drugs uh, where still it's very very human uh, based so while you might have applications you might have uh, advanced tools uh, but it's still very people centric now that said uh, how does uh, the technology plays a, a role uh, as you mentioned on the controls and uh, on the risk now again with with let's say uh, the introduction of ifc in the companies act the importance and the significance of uh, control and having a robust environment uh, having a, a robust compliance management system having a risk management system is very critical and the uh, all the assets are getting digitalized and uh, with so much data available what is very important is that the data that's available is protected and utilized in the way it mm -hmm. should be mm -hmm. so to that extent yes cfo and cio have to work very closely i mean at the end of it uh, no one can do one job without another so you need to have a, a user of the data you need to have the producer of the data right you need to have data uh, which you know tons and tons of data is available you need to make sure that somebody can analyze the data so the you know the all the analytical tools that are hmm. coming so somebody can you know decipher something useful right. for decision making from that right. data so so let me put to prathiba another another perspective here in the past as uh, you were saying from from uh, your experience mukund around the past is the entire CIO role, CFO role, and the whole conjoins started with probably the finance function, reports function. As it has moved into various other departments, front-ending roles, different technologies. Now, the question to you, Pratibha, since you have had experience in a skill organization, is how how much really CFOs and CIOs today, especially a CFO, is going to be having enough skills to be able to perform those functions? so actually uh, one is seeing a very interesting trend where i think the knowledge of both the cios and cfos mm -hmm. are beginning to converge um, you know at one point we were all functional experts we actually now more business partners we have to collaborate together and that entails that the cfo of today <coughs> has to be pretty well versed in the change in the technology landscape and that's happening very fast the cost of technology is diminishing you actually find now in the environment that even the small scale players have very easy access to technology mm -hmm. and that means the cfo has to develop a more of a venture capital approach to technology um, so i actually see both these converging because that is when the maximum impact is going to be made to the business so uh, you know in my words i'd say that both cio and cfo need to have a very symbiotic uh, relationship 
No, I, I'll take a very interesting point you mentioned, venture capital approach. Now, if you elaborate a venture capitalist, the key DNA of a VC or a venture capital is risk taking. Right. Right. So, Anuj, in your organization or and in your thinking process, do you really see CFOs in today's world will be able to get that sort of a venture capital approach and have change their standard CFO DNA, which is, you know, with all due respect, a bean counter sort of name, change into that sort of approach? So, as you rightly said, uh, traditionally, it goes against the DNA of CFO to be risk taking. But uh, as we have been uh, discussing gradually over the past few decades, the role of CFO or the way we understand our role is undergoing a change. We are more focused towards business uh, than traditionally being a CFO. So when we say we are more focused towards business, we are a partner in business, so obviously then we are taking risk. But we can take those risks provided we have a sufficient knowledge or appreciation or understanding of the other function. Mm -hmm. So that's where I believe in both CFO and CIO need to understand and complement each other role very well. Only then they will be able to complement each other for the common good of the organization. Comment on that? See, uh, I want to mention one thing about the CIO CFO relationship. So other than bo the, uh, they being the stakeholders, some of the things which are very critical in organizations, let's say an information security policy. Now this information security policy is widely understood or misunderstood within the organization. I think CFO and CIO can play a major role. The way most of the information security policies get defined, if the CFO and CIO sit together on a regular basis, that this is what we have, this is what we are addressing, because most of the companies need their data protection and information protection primarily in the areas of CFO and the CMO. Good, good. And, and that is something mm -hmm. they need to sit together every time mm. and define that this is what we have and this is what, what we should do, what next we should do. Right. And they should address this issue. That is how the IT security parameter will evolve yes, within yes. the organization. Okay. Yeah, I'd actually order. like to mm. add to that. It's, it's a very moot point he's uh, picked up. Because I think with the advent of now, uh, you know, BYOD, virtualization happening, the risk to organizations are far more. And hence, it's even more imperative for CIOs and CFOs to actually collaborate together. Um, mm -hmm. and, and with the cost of technology, you have open source, you know, uh, virtually at, at the click of a button, mm -hmm. you can buy any software. So you mm -hmm. have software as a service, platform as a service, anything as a service. Now, all that actually exposes the organizations to a lot of risk. I think it's a, it's a, it's a very vital so, point. So, uh, so, so that, that brings me to another interesting point and I like to throw that challenge to probably Srikant. Srikant, I'm coming to you again and again. Because while these guys are talking about cyber security, adoption of new technologies and Mukund talked about uh, a policy framework, right? You are in an organization which is at the forefront of all this. You just said that you are looking at the rate of obsolescence of these technologies and hence need to change the policies. Now, how easy or difficult is it to do what Mukun says, get CTO and CFO together and sit down policies which the rest of the organizations will follow or what is the process at which you are doing so, it? So, I think <clears throat> very good uh, question and I think it's a highly relevant topic not just for telecom but for every sector. That's my submission. Uh, why do I say that? Uh, I think more and more investments either in the form of capex or opex is likely to go into technology and this is only increasing year by year and I think a partnership between the CIO and the CFO has got enormous value, uh, they can add enormous value not just in terms of proper budget planning but in terms of getting disproportionate returns mm -hmm. on the investment. Mm -hmm. I can cite our own example where finance um, and the, uh, uh, and the uh, IT uh, leadership uh, teamed up together and um, in, in one go we managed to um, uh, not just reduce our IT spends by 25% mm -hmm. but actually um, change the component of the spend 
the ratio of the spend between OPEX and CAPEX towards much more of CAPEX as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think this is possible. And I would like to build on what Pratibha said, which is um, it is reality that IT investments are looking much more like yeah, the character of uh, venture capitalist mm. investments. Mm. And when you're taking such, it's now become risk capital. Mm. And when you're taking such decisions, I think it's highly imperative for the CFO and the CIO to put their heads together. And I think, you know, this has become a reality. There's phenomenal value to be added is what mm -hmm. I'm emphasizing again and again. Okay, so and our own example mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. you know, if you were to talk about we had a tradi traditional model which ran for a good 10 years successfully where we had outsourced almost the end-to-end -end IT to a very valued and respected global partner. And then times are changing. We needed much more agility in the way we are approaching our customers. As you rightly said, apps, mobile apps, for example, have much shorter lives. We need to have far more flexibility and agility in terms of turning around and lives of these apps are becoming shorter and shorter. Therefore, we had to change the model a little bit, not a little bit, actually significantly. And we had to do that. And so at the end of 10 years, we rehashed the whole contract and we have got a far more agile model mm -hmm. now currently running our uh, IT operations. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way you can go to market much faster and, and in a smarter. Right. So, so th that's probably you have been a little bit on the front end in this whole contracting model and the collaboration part. But since you mentioned about the rate of obsolescence, hence change the way you are procuring. Let me ask another point and, and maybe uh, mm, any of the organization can answer. One of the another issue is if you go back a few decades, couple, I think all of us have seen life couple of decades at least, there was a time when any discussion about adoption of technology for anything even simple, it needed thinking about the, the support staff to the hardware, the user interface and then the software and then the whole nine yards. Now, as the adoption is getting easy, you mentioned CAPEX to OPEX, it is becoming more of an OPEX discussion. Now, the issue is as CFOs, how are you able to control that because any, any smart young <coughs> chap can go and buy anything or download anything and run on his mobile, which will have the company data half of the time. So, you talked about control framework, how are you able to do that control framework? Okay, let me add my bit and request all my other colleagues to chip in. So, here again, the cloud offerings, for mm -hmm. example, have made it extremely easy for operating managers to hook on to something and meet their business need and run it in a secure manner and declare to the rest of the organization a technology success. And this can happen at multiple points and in multiple locations, without, even without anyone in the headquarters or in the IT function knowing, some factory or some warehouse or some business division may have done some cloud mm -hmm. kind of uh, thing and, uh, you know, uh, offering and it could be a really fragmented ecosystem across the organization. So, that risk mm -hmm. is there, mm -hmm. what you just mentioned, Samira. Mm -hmm. So, to the, the only way you can address that is to declare to the organization that the CFO and the CIO are working together on the governance mm -hmm. of what is really deployed across the company. Mm -hmm. And any, if you leave any loose ends there, mm. I think the whole ecosystem can be fragmented without control and that risk we have to be aware of. Aware of, okay. okay. And, 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 hmm. Yeah, to Srikant's point, at Tata Communications, we actually have a bring, bring your own uh, device policy. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, you have put a strong governance framework you're ensuring that the employee is only given access to information that he works on. Uh, and, you know, as uh, Shrikan mentioned again, you are, you are vulnerable. I mean, there is critical customer information that is available. But uh, one of the things that we found that today with so much of cyber attacks, etc., no matter what you do, that vulnerability will remain. So finally, it is also how you bring that consciousness within the organization. Uh, I think that is very, very relevant, you know, to be able to actually, uh, you know, instill in your employees the need for using information rightly, 
and the, and the compliance requirement. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's really how. But today, if you actually look even within the internet space, I mean, organizations are moving towards, you know, internet as a means of communication rather than investing in MPLS or Ethernets and all that. So I think that vulnerability will remain across. But uh, let me put a dissenting voice. I see it is a losing battle for the CFO and CTO. Okay. In fact, I'll put another perspective to that. I did mention about this word digital which is going around. Right? Today, if you look at it, most of the guys who are leading the digital guy, uh, drive in the organizations are the marketing or the sales head, the external heads. So already, <coughs> the technology is being adopted by a marketing and they are the most outward facing, they care least about the controls in any organization, you see that. If they start adopting technologies and say, hey, I need to adopt a customer or a social analytics tool which can give me this advantage, I need it tomorrow, how are you able to control them? But let me tell you, that oh. is actually happening. I mean, oh. today, the collaboration is between the operations, the marketing, the finance and the CTO. That's where I, oh. I, I would like to point out that we have been discussing the insurance of the security environment. Mm -hmm. Maybe CIO and CFO need to work together. So I would like, I can give an example of our, our organization where we have taken it to a step, for, step further. Not only CIO, CFO, we have involved sales and marketing also when we talk about the security, uh, safety of the data and all those things. So you are right, uh, uh, there are surprises that we hear that uh, I adopted this technology, we bought over this software, but then uh, there is a mindset change that needs to be brought in into the organization where people rather than CIO and CFO looking at a, a inspector or the governor or something like that, they should look at us as one of the business partner and they should come to us as a solution service provider rather than saying no to the whatever solution they come to us. So that, that will bring the change in the organization. Mm -hmm. So that is what we can ensure that all of us in the organization whether sales, marketing, uh, IT or finance, they are equally responsible for the data protection of the security. Yes, absolutely. You were saying something. Go ahead. Yeah, so, see, uh, since he, he gave a CFO's view, so let's hear the CIO's <laughs> view. So, my, the, the question which you asked was right. that a lot of people may bring in technology right. and it may create a problem. So, why do you want to stop that? I don't mm -hmm. think there is a need to stop that. The only thing we need to do, and because whatever you do, it will happen. Now, we need to find a solution which gives benefit to your organization. And here, the CIO-CFO relationship, which everybody has talked about, you know, we had enough of cost efficiency discussion that, you know, improve this cost, reduce this cost, do mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been enough discussions in every organization about value creation. Mm -hmm. If CIO and CFO sit together on value creation opportunities, performance gap opportunities, and they have the data available for them. Today you are talking about information security. You are talking about mobile security which you mentioned. Now few companies have started thinking and making of a mobile center of excellence. And that is how they are approaching a mobile strategy. Now these are things which are evolving. There is no solution right now available in any organization in its completion. But these value creation opportunities, this performance gap analysis, these are things which are going to be available now. And here CIO and CFO need to sit together and find those solutions together. Because as we discussed in the beginning, when I made that point, CFO, CFO's data is most critical, supposed to be finance and marketing data are supposed to be more critical than others in any organization. And if that is so, CFO plays a critical role. Now, in many organizations, CIOs do report to CFOs also. So, this responsibility remains with CFO. Mm -hmm. And if they work together on those value creation opportunities, they will be able to do better for the technology advancement of the organization. Because whether you do mobility or not, you do cloud or not, mm -hmm. social media or not, everybody is doing it. Mm -hmm. So, you will have to do it tomorrow. There is another thing which I want to mention, which maybe some of you may agree, some may not. This data protection is something, is a mindset. And you know, we need to actually understand which data we are trying to protect. Because 
if you remember and i'll give you a typical example which everybody talks about or might have heard of also in 60s and 70s people were not ready to put money in banks now you don't care the data protection also has to be viewed like that which data so you have been so much worried about competitors data somebody's data how what that guy is going to do with your data you are you should be more focused on what you will do with your own data what are the opportunities you are missing that is something you have to look at and that is here and once you do that well there is enough scope of expansion growth success and managing those risks with everyone so this is something we have to look at from the world of with a word of caution right so so which data that's very important let me turn to a, let's say a, a pharmaceutical example and it's very very interesting i like to pick two industries where i see the last two years i have been consulting with many companies both cfos ctos ceos and all that is a marked change in mindset now when i used to talk to a lot of pharmaceutical companies for them their data about the product their data about their entire testing statutory reports and all that is paramount and one of the one of the biggest issues they have is how do i protect it from getting pilfered and how do i protect it from being misused against us right, right. but let me put another perspective today if you look at and i am missing uh, any participation from a media and entertainment industry there the usage of live data feed from other sources like social media and others is imperative for them in creating news of tomorrow right right now do you see in your industry your industry moving in that sort of a scenario where instead of having a clamp down of i don't need to give any data to going into which data to tomorrow being a little more open about it because it's inevitable yeah so i think uh, i mean data it's in a very interesting uh, discussion that uh, one is what what data are we trying to protect and really even if you have uh, let's say the chief uh, digitalization officer who's trying to preserve the data what context uh, does it have let's say in pharmaceutical industry now i'll just take an example of uh, the us uh, industry where a lot of uh, patient confidential data is stored by the pharma companies now that data uh, and the leakage of that data could have huge ramifications on the companies and that data is obviously very very confidential and sensitive information now if you look at the indian uh, uh, regulation or indian environment today uh, we do not have that stringent uh, regulation where you have to kind of preserve or uh, maintain uh, that kind of data so yes now as far as the ip is concerned i'm mean, this in general uh, whether it's pharma or any other uh, industry where ips are created you need to ensure that there is enough security that any data whether it's physical data or uh, data that stored on uh, uh, technology uh, instruments uh, are protected and now uh, there again i mean i think it's very very important that uh, you you identify mm -hmm. and classify what is that you are trying to do exactly so why don't we do this i think we have discussed a little bit on the on the way this relationship happens we discussed about the nature of the advancement of technologies and the expectations of these two roles cfo cto about it and why don't i why don't i give time to maybe each of you i'll like to request you keep it very short is what do you see yourself these two roles evolving will they at all exist as a two parts of the similar coin or tomorrow it will be a cto linked to many many cxos around how this will evolve what do you see yourself 3 years down the line so anuj so uh, i see the 3 year down the line maybe more understanding of each other role but i don't see the merger of cio or cfo which may be there in few of the organization at present maybe there uh, the role of technology or role of it is not as as strong or the organization has not appreciated their role uh, of the information and technology so what i see in going forward uh, not only cio or cfo maybe at at the board level each one of us will have more understanding about each other role and it we will not stick to one particular domain as such we will be more of a generalist than specialist three years down the line okay so let me add a twist to that if you recollect and this is a little bit of a controversial twist 70 80 years back anybody setting up a plant needs to have his own electricity generation plant next to him 
right? Tomorrow, when you talk about the cloud and all that, do you see the CTO's role vanishing? Today, nobody has, nobody thinks about uh, uh, electricity generation. Just plug it. Yeah, probably we are looking at CIO in today also in terms of providing laptops or the desktops <laughs> or the bandwidth and all so, uh, uh, these things. So we need to look at CIOs mo uh, more than that providing business solution. Uh -huh. Like if I talk about our company, we are an import and trading organization. So CIO IT can play or does play a very vital and critical role in providing information, real time information. So if we start looking at CIO from that perspective, I don't think they will be just plug in and plug out function. Okay, Pratima, what about you? I have a completely contrarian view. I think at some point all roles are going to converge. Uh, we will start to see diminishing importance in any functional role, uh, you know, uh, across the organizations, leadership will have to converge. Uh, for example, today I have to read magazines on telecom, data quest, etc., only to understand what's the change in technology landscape mm -hmm. or environment that's happening. Mm -hmm. So I see an absolute convergence. Uh, and and at some level, I mean, actually, if you look at it, today's generation, when we started out, we did not understand technology. Mm, you mm. know, today's generation, yeah, and, yeah. and we had to actually look at user manual. I still remember the first cell phone that came. I think it was a Motorola. It actually had a user manual. Today, an iPhone doesn't require a user manual. So, you know, as every generation is advancing, they are becoming so technologically savvy that... At some point, I think the roles are going to completely disperse. Right. So, Mukund, a quick two minutes on do you think your role will exist five years down the line? So, three to five years, I don't think there is going to be too much change. Mm -hmm. If you ask me ten years down the line, mm -hmm. yes. What Pratibha is saying, mm -hmm. you know, there will be a migration towards that. And let me quote something here. While she was talking, I was thinking, you know, if you remember, uh, and many of you might have heard of the core competencies of the future, mm -hmm. uh, in which uh, you know the great uh, management guru, our own Indian K. K. Pralad, he said in future there will be no IT department in the organization. And now even the CFO CIO relationship, people who learnt Windows in class four, they are already in the job. 10 years down the line, give them 10 more years, they will be in significant positions. And that really, because they know what technology is. People who are before that, they learned technology. They sure. have lived with technology. So once that comes up, you will find that these roles, what, you know, what I said about the future of IT. So then future of IT means the way IT exists today, current IT department may not exist. IT, there will be service providers, sure. there will be people who will be experts in technology and there will be CFOs and CMOs and uh, other uh, heads of the different functions in the organizations who know what to buy, right. who so, know what to so use. So let me, let me turn to Srikanth who has probably been trying this for some time. <laughs> this evolving relationship of a CTO and the CFO's role in evolving that. I think uh, the future will be marked by uh, intense collaborative work between the the CIO of, mm -hmm. the, of the organization with every other function, it is not just the CFO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the real value has to be unleashed mm -hmm. when the CIO really works with the sales, with the product development, right. and with the go to market functions and right. so on and so forth. I think that's where the intensity mm -hmm. of that collaboration will determine the results mm -hmm. that technology will produce. Sure. What about you? Well, I think uh, the, the two roles uh, will not converge. That's what my view is. So I uh, think that the importance of both the roles are uh, very high. They, uh, you know, they will work uh, together very closely, but uh, you know, it's, it's something that uh, still there's enough space for both the roles to exist or coexist in an organization as the importance of technology becomes more and more uh, in the years to come. So I feel that uh, Yes, the CFOs would, uh, you know, start to appreciate more of uh, the need of the R, of what a CIO needs, what kind of investment it's uh, required, what kind of right. returns are there, mm -hmm. and eventually they would uh, work together. But I don't see that the role converging into sure. one. Absolutely, maybe diverge, maybe proliferate. Well, uh, I think before I summarize, 
Uh, why don't we throw it to the floor for a couple of questions? Is it okay? Any any questions to the any of the panelists? Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Maybe come over. Yeah. the investment into the other business uh, IT platforms? So, my view is today we have not reached the level of maturity where we can answer the question that data protection we have reached, reached an optimality. It is something similar, you know we talk about structured data, unstructured data. Our usage of normal operations, we do not use our structured data so well. There is so much opportunity there. And we have, we have started talking about so much of unstructured data not being used. But we need to learn how to use our structured data. And that is where you know the data pilferage and data protection, CFO's role which we discussed at, at length here, most of the data which organization is worried about is related to finance or marketing. So marketing of course in, includes the product development area where in from a perspective there can be patents. So those kind of data are very, very critical. Now those that data you need to protect. But what are the data, what is the kind of data you need to protect and what you should be worried about and not so worried about is important. Because you know, you, you may spend unnecessary energy, time and money on things which may not be so relevant few years from now. Th that is my view. Thank you. Any, any more questions? Yes, please. Right. right, so what do you, let me restate what you asked, the CIO's role converging or probably working more closely from a COO operations, I, I would probably add also CMO and others than a CFO. Good point. So, <coughs> well, I, I, let me just uh, add one thing there and I you know, I think we mentioned earlier that uh, I see the role of the CFO itself changing. The role of CFO itself is going beyond traditional accounting and finance to more of operations and strategy. So CF, CFOs have been, I think, is taking over partly the role of the CEOs and I, a lot of companies I see the, the role of CEOs are uh, diminishing. And so, you know, in that context, uh, yes, I mean, the, it, it's kind of back to the same place where the, C, the CIO is working closely with the CFO who has much bigger and wider role uh, uh, than just the finance. Uh. Sure. You want to give a CTO short answer? So, the, the short answer is, in fact, not COO. The word you should use is CEO. Okay. So, COO is a new evolution in the last decade. <laughs> so, this has, actually this has been going around because CFO is the person who is the <coughs> advisor to the management, CEO or anybody. So, CEO has all the data. Now, it is CEO's perspective to understand what thrust to put on technology and what is the kind of investment to be made today, tomorrow and in future. Sure. So I'll, that is I'll, I'll add a punchline to that. CFOs are no longer chief financial officers. They are chief facilitation officers. That's to protect a job a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody You're was right. showing a slide, chief future officer. <laughs> Any last question to the panel? Anything else? No. Okay, so uh, thanks guys uh, for an interesting discussion. Let me try to summarize of what I heard and probably also from the audience a few interesting points. Now, when I received the invitation to chair this panel, actually I looked at the topic, it says evolving CFO-CIO relationship. And my first thought was exactly what you said, that it has probably evolved beyond that already. Why are we still talking about a CFO-CIO relationship? It's a CXO and CIO. Every function is interested in how to maximize usage of technology for getting both growth and control. So possibly this was a CFO uh, summit, hence this came out. So. 
your point is valid it has evolved beyond that but the interesting point is that technology today if as it has evolved from the past in the past technology started with possibly a little bit of reporting as you said so so that very much was a cfo function financial reports then it went into entire back end system again very much looking at past data how is it running cfo function now already that has evolved into the future looking the growth imperatives which an organization has but the interesting part is as the panel discussed those things throw quite a few challenges to the organization the control framework security scare threats to the organization which typically a cfo always has to worry about doesn't go away they actually multiply hence that is one area where the cto and the cfo have to combine together to ensure that while the chief marketing officer while the operations head or the sales guy wants to go and maximize usages for getting the best deals out how does he protect the organization so that's an area definitely there is usage the second is the entire area around proliferation how do we ensure the policies the processes the procurement policies how how do people keep up to that so that's again a cto and cfo combined function which actually gets more stronger has to get more stronger the third is and it's very interesting i i i, I talk to many cfos and ceos and they say my biggest worry is that the guy sitting outside a young chap knows more about lot of these technologies and also have the benefits than probably me or even my direct reports so the entire skill factor the usage the planning of it keeping tab of what is coming up and what will give us the benefits becomes more imperative and why because in every industry there will be some competition which is coming up which is led by younger chaps technology savvy chaps and the ceos which are neglecting those those sort of competition suddenly has woken up and said hey are we really looking at how using some technology some new competition is coming up hence the role of the cfo especially the cto as it comes up is keeping the rest of the organization abreast so hence this role as a partnership instead of just looking at the past just looking at a simple i would say more of the erp sort of reporting framework has to now tomorrow evolve in ensuring the controls framework protecting the organization looking at future organization and also playing a combined evangelist role as a combination advising the rest of the organization of how do you grow while protecting all what we have so that's what we see when we were even discussing before getting on here as the role of this combination of cfo and cto as we go forward adopting these new areas it may be a little different in terms of speed of adoption depending on which industries some industries may be like banking telecom media entertainment may be much faster some industries it may be lower but the the tide is on the the tide is coming in what we think today is probably not at the cutting edge of the adoption you may be very well surprised suddenly a twist happens and it may completely change because of that so the future belongs to a very strong collaboration between these two functions to facilitate the rest of the cxos to still keep on using technology very fruitfully thank you thank you Yeah, thank you to all of you for this very excellent talk and discussion around the entire evolution of this relationship between CFO and uh, CIO, uh, from what it was from the past to the present, and taking it to the future. Thank you. I would uh, once again like to invite here Vineet to kindly do the honors of presenting the mementos. thank you uh, once again to all of you for sharing in your views
Yeah, we'll have a group photograph.